There are undoubtedly good reasons why Harry and Meghan took Sussex as a surname. Hello viewers, welcome to Royal Info Mate. Please make sure to subscribe and hit the notifications bell, so you don't miss any updates about the British monarchy. Maybe, as Meghan suggested, this would unify her family, though I'm not sure how. Monotheism is not a word I often associate with Montecito. Perhaps it would keep things clean and simple in branded America, where the details of aristocratic titles are little known or understood. But back in the world of British royalty, where the dukes have their origins, things are a little different. There are rules for those who inherit these privileges, or are given them. The title of Duke of Sussex was a gift from the prince's grandmother, Queen Elizabeth, on Harry's wedding day in 2018. I fear this is a move that will only distance the prince and his children from the royal family, from their British roots, and from their father and grandfather, the king, who has now been diagnosed with cancer. There is a difference to be made here. I'm not all that opposed to Harry using Sussex as a nickname. There is a history to this kind of thing, after all. Think, for example, of Princess Margaret's husband, who was given the title of Earl of Snowdon after marrying the Queen's sister. He has legitimately used the name Tony Snowdon, both socially and professionally. As the wife of a royal duke, it's perfectly acceptable for Meghan to style herself in the Meghan Sussex way. Why not? But it's different for the kids, four-year-old Archie and two-year-old Lilibet. Their family name is Mountbatten Windsor, and should remain so. Sussex is incorrect. It's not even a title. Few Americans will be too bothered by all this, and it's hard to avoid the suspicion that the US is the only place that registers with Meghan. However, the royal family cares about these matters, and so do the British people. Furthermore, the Mountbatten-Windsor family name is of particular importance. Philip, was dismayed to discover that when his wife, Princess Elizabeth, became queen in 1952, their children, and their children's children, would no longer bear his surname Mountbatten. Rather, they will be Windsor, named after the Queen's family. Philip, was angry and hurt. The decision was considered harsh and cruel. I am the only man in the country who is not allowed to give his name to his children, he protested. It hurts him, Countess Mountbatten, wife of Philip's uncle and mentor, Lord Mountbatten of Burma, recalled at the time. He gave up everything for his wife, and this is the ultimate insult. It was a terrible blow. It was elder statesman Winston Churchill who found the solution, one that was encouraged by the young Queen's private secretary, Tommy Lascelles, a wise president some forty years her senior. Together, Churchill and Lascelles forced Elizabeth to do so, she lacked the confidence to do it herself, and it was agreed that all descendants of the royal couple down the male line would be named Mountbatten-Windsor, with the exception of those princes and princesses. A tactful compromise. So, how sad that after just three generations, Harry must blatantly ignore his grandfather's wishes and effectively abandon the family name that Philip fought for. Harry has declared that he respects and loves the Duke of Edinburgh, and I'm sure he does and always will, but this latest debacle will have Philip turning in his grave. Do Harry and Meghan think they are smart? This may have been an attempt to establish the Sussex name so firmly that the title could not be effectively removed whatever the political atmosphere in Great Britain. Okay that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments section below. Please like, share and subscribe for more.